in the hushed tones of Twilight's Descent, welcome to Whispers of Guilt. Tonight we unfurl the pages of a story that has perplexed the minds of many, a narrative woven from the fabric of the unknown. We revisit the windswept shores of Somerton Beach, where the silent whispers of the Tamam Shud mystery linger in the salty air. An enigma wrapped in the riddle of an unidentified dead man, lying fully dressed on the beach, a cryptic piece of paper, a secret code that has evaded deciphering for decades. A suitcase found at a train station and a mysterious woman and child. This tale, untouched by time, beckons us to explore the depths of its hidden truths and unspoken secrets. So, lend an ear to the whispers of the past as we delve into the perplexing puzzle that history has dared us to solve. The Tamam Shud Mystery. Join us as the echo of guilt from an untold story beckons us to listen closer. Welcome to Whispers of Guilt, a haven where mysteries echo and the untold stories of true crime come to light. Each week, we delve into the confusing world of murder mysteries from across the globe, unravelling tales that linger in the shadows of justice. Join us as we explore the intricate webs of evidence and secrets, seeking whispers of truth hidden in the depths of guilt. Our podcasts delve into complex and sometimes deeply unsettling events. We understand the impact these narratives can have. Should you find yourself in need of assistance or support at any point, we strongly encourage you to reach out to your local crisis centres. Your well-being is paramount and help is available. The Enigmatic Code In the pocket of our Somerton man was a scrap of paper pulled from the world of poetry into a real-life conundrum. Tamam Shud, it read, Persian for the end. But this was no ordinary bookend. It was torn from the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, a text shrouded in as much mystique as our man himself. The Rubaiyat's verses speak of fate and the fleeting nature of life, an eerie echo to the man's silent tale. But this poetic piece was only one half of the riddle. Deep within the book's cover, investigators uncovered a scrawled code. Lines of letters, seemingly random, taunting the minds of the best codebreakers since its discovery. Was it a spy's cipher? A love note? Or perhaps a list of book codes used for clandestine communication? Theories abound, but the truth remains just out of reach. One intriguing fact not widely known is that the code's format doesn't match that of known espionage ciphers of the time, which typically included numbers. This discrepancy has led some to speculate that it may have been a personal memorization tool, a list of first letters for every line of a verse he wanted to remember, or even a one-time pad, the most uncrackable of codes if used correctly. The book itself, believed to have been thrown into a car near the beach, contained a phone number and an unidentified number, further perplexing investigators. A man. A book. A code. All threads woven into a tight knot of mystery that has yet to unravel. Now let's consider another peculiar twist. In the 70s, a man came forward claiming his mother had given him a rare copy of the Rubaiyat as a child, the very book from which our Tamam Shud slip was torn. His mother, possessing a curious nature, had found the book in an unlocked car. Could this be the very vehicle from which the book was reportedly thrown? And if so, what serendipity led it into the hands of a young boy, only to emerge as a potential clue years later? A mysterious woman. The plot thickens as we venture into the life of a woman entwined with the mystery of our Somerton man, a woman known only as Jestin. The phone number nestled within the pages of the Rubaiyat led to her, but her real name was Joe Thompson, a name she would not disclose until much later. Living mere minutes from where the body was found, Justin denied knowing the man, yet her reaction to his plaster cast was one of shock, a mask hiding a storm, perhaps. Unveiling the layers, we find Justin had training as a nurse during the war, a skill set that includes knowledge of poisons, which some armchair detectives find suspicious given the suspected cause of the Somerton man's demise. But it's a lesser-known fact that Jestin was also fluent in Russian during a time when the Cold War had everyone looking over their shoulder for spies. Could this linguistic clue link her to espionage, or is it merely a coincidence? There's a tangle of romantic intrigue, too. Jestin gave a copy of the Rubaiyat to a man named Alfred Boxall, 
who many initially suspected to be the Somerton man, but Boxall was found alive, with his copy intact. The connection suggests a possible love triangle that has led some to speculate that our Somerton man was, in fact, the jilted lover in this scenario, or perhaps a spurned spy. And then, there's Justin's son, Robin. Genetic anomalies in his teeth and ears mirrored those found on the Somerton man, a discovery that breathed life into the theory of a secret lineage. Was the Somerton man an unknown father coming to claim or glimpse his son, or to confront Justin? The family theory is compelling, yet it raises as many questions as it answers. Justin's son would later remark that his mother knew more than she let on, that she had a dark secret which she took to her grave. Justin passed away in 2007, and with her, the whispers of a woman tied to a mystery that refused to die. Poison without a trace. Turning a page in our tale, we confront a medical marvel that stumps even the sharpest of minds. Our Somerton man, poised in peaceful repose on the beach, seemed to have succumbed to an unseen assassin. Poison. Yet, the autopsy reports confound the matter. No traces of known toxins were found in his system, a fact that leaves us grappling with a spectral killer. In the realm of forensic science, the lack of evidence is a tale in itself. Our man's spleen was swollen, his liver engorged, and blood congested in his stomach. All signs that point to poison. But of what variety? Theories have flourished like mushrooms in the dark, from digitalis, a heart drug, to exotic substances that vanish after doing their deadly work. We find a curious twist in the possibility of a rare, undetectable poison one known to those in espionage. Could this suggest our Somerton man was embroiled in a game of spy versus spy, eliminated by a toxin so rare, so perfect, that it left no trace? A lesser known fact is that during that era, researchers were only able to test for a limited range of toxins. Today's toxicology screens are far more comprehensive, but the samples from our mystery man have long degraded, leaving the truth just out of science's reach. But let's ponder an alternative, a hypothesis whispered in the corridors of conspiracy. Could it be that the Somerton man, presumed to be a man of intelligence, took his own life with a self-administered compound known to elude detection? A final act to ensure the silence of his story remains eternal. The poison without a trace is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside our enigma. And it leaves us questioning the line between fact and fiction in the realm of cold cases. The missing labels. In our story's fabric, a peculiar detail sticks out like a thread begging to be pulled, the case of the missing labels. When the Somerton man's suitcase was discovered at the Adelaide railway station, every piece of clothing within was meticulously stripped of its identifying tags. This is not the random act of a man disinterested in fashion, but a deliberate attempt to obscure identity, a detail that whispers tales of intrigue and subterfuge. Consider the era's context when a man's clothing label could tell you not just the brand but his travels, his class, and even his allegiances. Removing them was like erasing footprints from the sands of time. In the pre-digital age, it was akin to deleting one's browser history. A clue that has led many to speculate a desire to vanish from whatever world he came from. But the plot thickens. Amongst the personal effects, investigators found a tie, a laundry bag, and a singlet all marked with the same unknown letters. Keen, or T. Keen. Was this a red herring planted by the man himself, or a clue overlooked by someone intent on concealing his identity? The labels seemed to spell a name, yet no missing persons report matched it, adding another layer to our historical palimpsest. Here's a detail that hasn't made it into the limelight. The thread used to mend the trousers the man wore matched the thread in the suitcase. It implies premeditation that the man or someone who knew him carefully prepared these clothes for a journey or perhaps for the final act of a play that was to have no encore. The missing labels in the Tamam Shud case remain a silent testament to the length someone went to ensure the Somerton man's past would stay as elusive as his cause of death. Was he shedding his previous life or was someone else orchestrating a disappearance act? The silent labels hold their secrets tight as we continue to grasp at the fraying edges of this mystery. The Sailor's Stencil, a nautical twist in the tale. 
As we cast our net wider into the depths of the Tamam Shud mystery, a seemingly mundane item in the Summerton Man's suitcase pulls us into a new current of conjecture. Among his belongings was a stencil kit, a tool commonly used by seafarers to mark their possessions. This clue has steered some theorists towards the idea that our enigmatic figure might have been a sailor or a worker, tethered to the ebb and flow of the shipping industry. Picture a man of the sea, navigating not only the vast oceans but the tumultuous times of post-war geopolitics. It's a time when the world's ports were pulsating arteries of trade and transport, where every sailor could be a courier of secrets as much as cargo. The stencil kit might have been an artifact of his profession, a simple tool for a transient lifestyle on the high seas. Yet, let's dive deeper, beyond the surface. What if this stencil kit was not merely for marking clothes or crates, but for encoding messages? Could it have been a piece in a larger puzzle, a component of clandestine communication on the docks or between ships under the cover of night? And consider this, the shipping industry would be a perfect cover for a spy. A sailor with no fixed abode, moving from port to port, country to country, with ease and without suspicion. The anonymity afforded by the sea could be the very reason behind the stripped labels and the Summerton man's obscured past. But let's not sail too far on speculation alone. There's a more prosaic possibility. The man could simply have been a worker or a merchant in the maritime industry. A traveller who met an untimely end far from his home port. The absence of identifying documents and the removed clothing tags could suggest a man who was, perhaps, escaping a part of his life, seeking anonymity in death as in life. This sailor theory adds yet another layer to our enigmatic man's identity, suggesting a life spent on the crest of waves, a life that may have left very few traces on land. It's a reminder that sometimes the most telling clues lie not in what is present, but in what is missing. In this case, a clear-cut identity and a life that can be easily traced. The sailor's stencil is more than just an item. It's a symbol of the transient nature of the Summerton man's existence, and a poignant reminder of the tides of history that sweep us all into its flow, leaving behind only the flotsam and jetsam of our stories. The H.C. Reynolds connection, a historical identity. In the swirling vortex of theories surrounding our Summerton man, there emerges the visage of H.C. Reynolds, a name tied to a photograph and a theory that tantalizes with its potential for truth. The photo, depicting a young man bearing a striking resemblance to the Summerton man, was found in the possessions of a deceased couple. The back bore the name H. C. Reynolds, and for some, the pieces of a historical puzzle began to fall into place. The identity of H. C. Reynolds, however, proved to be as elusive as the Summerton man himself. Some believe that Reynolds was a seaman, aligning with the theory of our man's maritime connections. Others go further, suggesting that Reynolds could have been an alias, a common practice for those in intelligence services to mask their true identities. But there is a catch that adds complexity to this potential revelation. The photograph's subject, presumed to be Reynolds, was found to be wearing a medal ribbon for the British Mercantile Marine War Medal, indicating service during the First World War. If the Somerton man was Reynolds, it would place him at an age older than initially estimated. This discovery spawned a cross-reference of databases, including shipping records and war service roles, yet no H.C. Reynolds from that era could be conclusively matched to our man on the beach. This theory beckons us to question the very nature of identity in a time of global unrest. Was H.C. Reynolds the true identity of the Somerton man, a remnant of a bygone war, washed ashore in a future conflict? Or is the name yet another red herring in a case riddled with misdirections? The H.C. Reynolds theory presents a haunting possibility that the Somerton man had lived a life once known, once recognized, but now lost in the echoes of history, leaving us with a face without a name, a story without an end. A link to the past. In the shadow of the Somerton man's unsolved case lies a beacon of hope, modern science. For decades, the identity of the man by the sea remained frozen in time until recent DNA analysis proposed a thaw. With the advancements in genetic testing, the Somerton man's case has been reopened, his body exhumed, in a quest to finally put a name to the man behind the myth. The DNA findings suggest our mystery man may have had relatives, 
his lineage potentially traced back to the United States or even farther afield. Some speculate he could have been of exotic descent or have familial ties to someone walking amongst us today, an ordinary individual unwittingly linked to a tale of extraordinary mystery. And what of the historical link to Jestin and the potential for the Somerton man to be the father of her son, Robin? The similarities in their physical features, the cleft chin, the ear shape, and genetic quirks rare enough to raise eyebrows and suspicions. If DNA can confirm a familial match, it could unravel the story of a love that dared not speak its name, a secret child, and a clandestine visit that ended in tragedy. But let's also consider the fabric of the time, post-World War II, the dawn of the Cold War, a period rife with espionage. Our man could have been a player in the great game of intelligence, his past obscured, his records expunged, a spy with a life story so classified that, like his labels, it was meant to remain forever unknown. The quest to link the Somerton man to his past is a bridge between then and now, a testament to our relentless pursuit of truth. It is a journey that continues to captivate a historical knot that we are determined to untangle. As we peer through the lens of modern forensics, we inch closer to revealing the man behind the mystery, to providing the closure that has eluded us for over 70 years. The link to the past is not just a thread to a bygone era, but a cord that binds us to the relentless human desire to solve the unsolvable and know the unknowable. As we stand on the precipice of potential revelation, we are reminded that history is not just a series of events, but a mosaic of human stories, endlessly fascinating, often heartbreaking, and invariably enigmatic. In conclusion, as our deep dive into the shadows of the Tamam Shud case concludes, we're left peering into the murky waters of history, pondering a mystery that seems as unsolvable today as it did over seven decades ago. This case, a tapestry of the improbable and the eerie, challenges us to question how well we can ever truly know the stories of the past. The Tamam Shud mystery remains unsolved, a cipher from the past that beckons the bravest among us to unlock its secrets. We stand at the edge of history, looking into the abyss of the unknown, and it's time to rally. Arm yourselves with curiosity. Cloak yourselves in determination, for we are the ones who dare to chase the echoes of a story untold. Join us on whispers of guilt as we marshal our collective wits in a quest for answers. Stand with us, share your theories, explore the evidence, and together let's endeavor to illuminate the shadows of the past. The silent man of Somerton Beach calls out across the decades. Will you answer?